looks like almost every parking spot is taken up, but there might have been some that have opened up. Smith High School for the Frag Farmers Market. Get ready to check it out. Lasso Master? Yep. Okay. We just did a video with him. All right. You, what's your channel? The same thing. Lasso Master. Okay. Let me... It's Tiago, Chris, and this is my friend Johan. All right. We got Tiago, Chris, and what's your name? Johan. Johan. Team Reef Crazy right here. Team Reef Crazy and Blasto Master on YouTube. On YouTube, C Tars, and Boston Reefing Society. Okay. On Instagram, Reef Crazy. Reef Crazy on Instagram. So yep. tell us about how the day's been for you. Well, the day's been quite busy. A lot of people came in, um, sold a lot of corals, obtained a lot of really nice corals. Some of the corals I've always wanted, I was actually able to purchase today. Okay, which which one are those? Do you have those here? Yes, they're right here. This has been like a lifelong dream for me to have this Oregon torrent right here. It's gorgeous. I love it so much. This is the second one right here I've always wanted. They're called Bowser's. These ones are like amazing. I've always wanted to have these and I've never had these ones. Great. These are like my two dream corals right there. So, so out of the corals that you're selling, what are your favorite ones? Um, probably right now the bounce mushrooms. Okay. See, I kind of got into the bounce mushroom craze a little bit late, mm -hmm. but um, once I get in, I got in. Hard to I get got, out. Got, so, do you have some bounce mushrooms you want to show? Yeah, them? I have a couple of small frags of what's left. So this one over here, this is the biohazard okay. bounce mushroom from WWC. Up next is. The OG Boss Mushroom from WWC, which is Worldwide Corals. This other one right here is a Sunkissed Boss Mushroom. And um, I mean, I have other bosses at home, but this is all I brought today. Great. Well, thank you very much. This is, thank you so much, sir. So, what's your um, company? The company name is AZ and Nutty Sawa Connections. Most people just call me Frost. It's a lot easier. Frost? Okay. Yeah. And um, what's your theme? It seems like you have a lot of LPS. I love LPS. I love the fat, fluffy kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, I do a lot of the, like Lobos. I got a lot of Welsos. I love Scolies, Plates, all that kind of stuff. Okay. I do have other stuff as well. It's just my heart's into the big, fluffy stuff. The big, fluffy stuff. Yeah, yeah some of these are massive. Look at those. They're, those elegance yep. corals? Yep, or? single elegance corals. And then these are just, these brain corals are massive. Right. And then so you grow them mostly or you maintain them? I grow them a lot of or... stuff, but a lot of stuff I import because I go to so many shows, so I have to import more than what I can grow. Sure. So the yeah. higher end stuff, I'll hold on and I'll grow it down onto those. And a lot of the stuff that I do import though, like the like the uh, rainbow uh, torches and the gold torches, all that stuff is culture too. So I like to support okay. the culture market. Sure. Great. Those are blastos. Those are nice looking bubble tips back there. Yep. Black widow anemones in the back. What what makes them a black widow anemone? You have to have a black center. Okay. The, uh, deep red, and you have to have the little bit of that uh, silver lining around the tentacles on the bottom. Okay. Sometimes I get a little bit of speckling in the tentacles too. And this is a perfect example of one right here. Okay, that, that real dark one? Mm -hmm. And those bright ones, are those a different type? Or? Those are the same, but those are freshly pulled off a rock from a grower that I have here locally. Okay. Yeah. So the ones that it comes to, the ones I normally sell, those I'm going to take home and reculture them. Okay, so that one is, that one's ready to go right yep. there. So how much would that typically go for? Uh, typical, I mean, the price ranges on size and stuff, anywhere from yeah. 175 to 250 So the bigger ones will ask for a much higher price. Yeah, so those are really nice. And you got the flower and enemy craze. Yep. Great. All right, I have Chris here from Aqua Dreams Aquarium. Yep. And we're at the Frag Farmers Market. What was the hottest seller for today? Uh, definitely the Durasa clams from ORA. We had uh, small blue lip Durasa clams for uh, $50, and we sold almost all of the ones we brought with us. Oh, wow. 
And yep. um, what is your, I guess, the favorite, your favorite thing that you brought with you? Uh, that would be the gold torch coral from Australia. Okay, is that this one back there? Yeah. A little hard to see. Let's see back there. Yeah, it has uh, white tips and orange stems. Did you sell, sell any of those today? I or? did not. This is the only one I brought and it's still here. Alright, well, if someone wants to get that, um, you say you're located in Massachusetts? Uh, yes, we're located in uh, Feeding Hills, Mass, which is a suburb of Springfield, part of Agawam. It's near Six Flags, about 90 miles from Boston. About right. 30 minutes north of Hartford and just west of Springfield, Mass. Okay, great. Well, well thank you very much. Be sure to check out Aqua Dreams. Thanks, man. We got, <laughs> we got Mike from uh, FUPA. They're a coral conglomerate. Tell me a little bit about FUPA. Well, it's uh, six guys that just got together with common interests and hobbies. Um, a little bit on the uh, abrasive side, but we have a good time. <laughs> It's more of a family-friendly type thing. Get together, have holiday parties, uh, collect coral, come here all the time, have as much fun as we can. Uh, so tell me about what's um, what's been your hottest seller today? Uh, I'd say the Acans and the uh, the Montes. Barbecue sauce too, believe it or not. And then what's um, you picked up some corals for yourself? Yep. What, what did you pick up? Uh, Jawbreaker, uh, Kryptonite mushroom, a couple chalices, uh, Speed Bomb Monty. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, dude. Kyle from Refrax. How's it going, on, Mike? We got Mike and Doreen from Refrax. So, um, tell us a little bit about your product and um, what inspired you to make it. It's a pretty neat product. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, the product is made out of a two-part resin. Um, yeah. It's chemically inert. It's, it is buoyant uh, for the racks that have magnets. Um, you want to grab one and, yeah, sure. and hold it up? So right now, right now these are rated for a quarter inch thickness, but in the upcoming weeks we're going to, uh, we're going to be changing that out for, for half inch thickness, just adding uh, stronger magnets to it, as well as a backing plate, as you see here. These okay. are the same style racks. So, um, yeah, the, uh, we have a few different models everywhere from the originals, like these, mm -hmm. ranging into shelves and corner shelves. Can pass one of those guys over there? Yep. So these, yeah, these were some of the first ones that were in my tank. And uh, these were in my tank for about a year, year and a half. Um, and you just, did you make those just by drilling a hole in a rock, or? No, no, these are made from resin. Oh, those are from the resin too. Yep, these okay. are all these are all resin products. Um, you make a mold and cast into a mold. But um, you can see all the coralline algae growing on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, I, I another part of the reef. Yeah, that's it. Make That's it look it. as natural as possible, blend in with your aquascape as perfectly as we can. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. We got Ryan and Scott from Sun and Sand yep. with their booth of primarily Zoas. A um, few anemones, a few LPS, a few SPS, kind of a mix, general mix of everything. So what's been the most in-demand coral? Uh, I think it's been an even split today. Usually softies go quick like the uh, Ricks do, but I think everyone's liked a little bit of everything. Bubble tips have been going really good. <laughs> uh, I sold out of those, almost sold out. I, you know, all but one of them uh, first thing this morning. Um, okay. Zoos have been moving really good, same with the Recordias. So. What's, your, what's your favorite coral in, in the tank right now? <laughs> My favorite? It'd be a toss-up. I'm pretty partial to these green, uh, purple tip, green bubble tips, but I'm kind of jealous of the uh, Godzilla bounce mushroom that he's got over here. Yeah, I just bought this um, with almost everything I made today. Okay. Uh, I've been after it for about a year and a half, so to finally have one, I'm, it's it's definitely my favorite, and I hope it kicks around for me for a long time. So that's yeah. a Godzilla bounce shroom? It is. Yep. It's a type of Yuma. Is it okay if uh, you tell us how much you paid for it? Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. Which is wow. surprisingly enough a pretty decent deal. Yeah, yeah, there is a little baby on it, so there's there's a little yeah. incentive. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yes. Check out Sun and Sand. So we did it. We did the New England Frag Farmers Market. The lesson I learned is bring your budget in cash and only use cash as soon as you start whipping out that credit card. 
you're probably going to go over your budget. Uh, but we found a lot of awesome corals. We had a really good time. And we're going to take them home and get them acclimated and get them in the tank. Look at my haul of corals. I kind of went out of control here. I was pretty excited about all the things I saw, the deals. I even picked up a clam. I got a baby lightning maroon clownfish for my other one, so that will be an interesting saga to see how they pair. I also got another anemone, and I have this really cool thing I got from Reef Racks that's kind of like an anemone chalice vase thing. I'll see how that goes. But right now everything's just kind of acclimating um, in the tank, and I've got my buckets here for my dip procedure. So I'm going to do my typical Coral RX combined with my bare insecticide dip. Of course combine that with inspection. I did see that one frag had some bubble algae so I will scrape all that off. But everything, absolutely everything, is going first into this tank where it will be forged on by an army of about 10 emerald crabs and it'll be quarantined in here for a period of time and each piece inspected before it ever makes it in my main tank. So combination of the dips, the quarantine, the inspection should be what we need to keep the other tank happy and healthy. Meanwhile, the fish are just doing really great in this tank. I really, really like the firefish. Ever since I did this new net solution, you can check out one of my other videos for that where I doubled up the, the mesh on here. Um, with some of the eighth inch netting from Bulk Reef Supply. That has stopped any of those guys from jumping. So hopefully they don't jump through this pile of coral. But once I get them in these buckets, it will be time to put that lid back on. So let's get started. So we got two bird's nests. Got a season's greeting cap. And we got an A-can. We've got a three pack of zoas. I think we've got cat's eye zoa in here. Uh, blue-eyed blondes, and we also have some worldwide coral space universe, some sort of pink coral. Got a red setosa, more beautiful acans, some sort of zoa. We got a gold euphilia, uh, but this is a really cool looking zoa. Like we have a single scarface zoa in here, another very pretty zoa. Got the red purple eaters, and I believe these are another kind of purple eater. Oh, another type of purple people eater. Maybe not a purple people eater, but some type of people eater. An eater of the people. So there's my haul of coral. Let's get them dipping. So now those are in Coral RX, and I'll do that for eight minutes. We have 80 milliliters of bear into the dip. So I think one of the coolest things I picked up was this vase for holding an anemone. And this was made by Refrax. So I've got my anemone in there. Beautiful and orange. I'm going to stick him in the vase and see how he takes to it. Okay, so I did get him stuck down there in the little vase. The problem with the vase uh, when you don't have a sand on your bottom of your tank is the vase... It, wants to f it's basically neutrally buoyant so it doesn't necessarily want to sink really hard doesn't necessarily want to float um, and so without some sand to cover up the base just wasn't quite staying in place but i was able to wedge it in with those other rocks now the little nubs in there on the inside of the base are great they actually hold the anemone in place so hopefully he'll take root there and start to spread out last things i have are the clam i'm going to find a place to put him and then I'm also going to release this guy. He's all acclimated, so I think I'm just going to just going to let him free. This is the the maroon. He's a lightning maroon, but I'm calling him a necklace maroon um, because he just has the cool pattern on his neck, and he does not have the center bar, which I thought was interesting. If I was trying to breed them, you know, I'd be focusing on one with a really cool, good lace pattern, but. You know, I'm not. It's a lot of work to breed these guys, and it's just going to be really fun to, you know, to have one that has a cool different pattern that you don't see a lot. So there he is. Hopefully he'll get used to this tank for a while, find an enemy, then we'll move him to quarantine, and then we'll slowly introduce him uh, to the big guy and see if they take a liking to each other. 
Well, thank you very much for watching this episode of Puff Daddy Reef. That's my haul from the Frag Farmers Market. It's been a really long day, so I need to get to bed. But thank you very much for tuning in. And I'll catch you next time on Puff Daddy Reef. Thank you.